What's up, it's Nez, and hello everyone, and welcome back to The Fatal 12. Last episode, Mihara proved that she's the greatest waifu of all, and we got introduced to Federico and Odette, two of our competitors in The Divine Selection. Right now, we're still playing as Federico and we seem to be tailing Rochan Ho. Later that day, Odette gets me to start tailing him. Needless to say, this is all for the sake of getting information regarding his regret. Divine Selection takes place at 12pm on Sunday JST, so we'll be in a good spot if we manage to get all three pieces of info on him before then. As for why I'm tailing him on my own, well, Odette's down with a hangover. Not in a way you'd imagine though, she ain't suffering in bed, she's pissed off and screaming at everyone and everything. Can't believe she's making me second guess her usefulness just one day later. Uh oh, we have a problem. Not long after I start tailing him, I have to rush back to the hotel to get Odette. Rose Company was located in one of those fancy high-class buildings in the middle of Beijing City. I lost sight of him thanks to it being so crowded, but I managed to learn his plans. A few minutes after entering the building, he made his way back out. Acting as someone there on official business, I asked the front desk about the schedule, to which they replied he was leaving on a business trip. They were hesitant about revealing the destination first, but I managed to get them to reveal where he'd be staying in Taiwan for three days while visiting their local branch. Turns out we can hop on the same flight as him if we haul our ass over to the airport. I knock on their door, fully expecting her to flip out at me. Imagine my surprise when she struts out of the room all ready to go, luggage and all. As an aside, our phones and credit cards were perfectly intact, despite washing up ashore, so we didn't have any issue buying whatever gear we needed. My fucking god Odette, you are so buff and sexy. Huh? And you didn't bother telling Federico? She was fucking testing him! She drops that bombshell on me like it's a casual greeting. The fact that she doesn't mention what she'd do with me if I failed her little test proves how twisted she is. Why do I gotta be tested in the first place? Nothing, absolutely nothing. We leave the hotel after I rush to get my stuff together. Time to chase after Ro Chan Ho. Having made it on time to catch the same flight as Ho, we make our way to our hotel in Taiwan after landing. It's the same hotel he's staying in, so we can choose a room far enough away from him, and then discuss our next move over some wine and cheese. ナマイキにビジネスクラスに乗ってやがったから、ロビーで見つからなかったんだ。ま、エコノミーじゃ出っ張った腹が邪魔だろうがな。偶然座席が余ってて that is true, everyone did get to see everyone else's faces. The thing most people don't know are their names, cause of death, and regret. そんなこと、警戒すらしてなかったみたいだ。まさか私ら戦艇の参加者が中国まで追ってきてるとは思ってないみたいだ。いや、それ以前に、平然と仕事をして暮らしているあたり、あれはもしかしたら戦艇その
確かにそいつは妙だなあいつは明日に台湾支社へ行って明後日には工場の視察に行く予定になっているはずだどちらもこのホテルからのアクセスは悪くないはずだがまあいいならお前は明日も張り込みを頼む私は別の視点から調べ物をしてみる Something's definitely telling me that r o c h a n Home might be setting a trap for us はあなんだよそれ今日は飯だ台湾料理はまだ食ってないからな私は海の幸にはうるさいがどれ地中海料理との違いを堪能してやろうぜまいずれにせよ早まって牢を問い詰めたりしたら逆効果だしな We split the rest of the wine between us and finish off the cheese 地中海はフランスのもんじゃなくイタリアのもんだ海の幸の比較なら俺の方が適任だわな Well, at least we're cooperating and she's not trying to kill us. Yet.、Yeah. The major thing I take away from yesterday's activities is that, surprisingly, Taiwanese food ain't half bad. Yeah, they could work on the presentation a bit, but those steamed shrimp buns were delicious. Could see myself getting hooked on those rice noodles, too. Don't let me forget the spicy stuff either. Adding some doban jiang and hiamian jiang really created the perfect and rich balance between sweet and sour. Oops, that's enough of dead impressions for one day. Even though my stomach regrets eating so much last night, here I am in the hotel's parking lot early in the morning waiting for Ro. Once I see him leave in the taxi, I make sure to follow. And now I've been sitting around outside his company's building for a good part of the day, boring as hell, but I'm used to waiting by this point. The streets of Taiwan really are an interesting sight, though. You can get a good hour's worth of entertainment from people watching. Too bad I still got another seven hours left. After what feels like an eternity, I finally spot him leaving the building. <laughs> I figure he'll make his way back by taxi too, but it looks like he's hoofing it instead. It's entirely possible that the people at the front desk told him he'd only be staying one night just to get rid of me. But the fact that he's not going straight back by taxi proves nothing. He could be going out for a meal with someone first, that much is normal for a corporate bigwig like him. As it turns out, he ends up in an Italian restaurant in town. A ristorante, to be accurate. Italian restaurants are split into ristorantes, trattorias, and osterias. Ristorantes are the fanciest of the three. Oh, the glass paneling makes a restaurant easy to keep an eye on, so I waltz into the cafe directly across the street. It's got glass paneling as well, so there's no danger of losing track of him. I order an espresso and dump plenty of sugar into it. It's gonna be a struggle to make this last as long as the ristorante meal, but I gotta deal with it. As far as I can tell, it seems like a real fancy joint. Looks like he's made a reservation, judging by how he gets taken to his seat by one of his staff right away. Soon after, someone takes a seat across from him. A young woman. She's wearing one of those glitzy red dresses that dirty old geezers drool over. I'm pretty sure he's got a family, but it doesn't take much for me to catch on to what this is about. She ain't my type, but there's no denying that she's a looker. Doesn't seem like a random hostess either. <laughs> Sleazy! Having discovered their relationship, I spend the rest of my time watching them enjoy their meal. Guess he's picked out the wine beforehand, gotta hand it to him. Red wine like that will send any woman over the moon, assuming they've got good taste. It's just a shame that he's using the bread to wipe up the leftover pasta sauce. You're gonna make that woman feel ashamed to be with you, buddy. The restaurant seems like it's more on the expensive end compared to the others around here, too. Chances are he started going to these types of places more often once he hit a certain age. He has the appropriate manners, but sticking to him also dropping old habits can prove a bit tricky. Not like anyone's gonna call him out for it, considering his age and position. Three hours pass before they finish eating and enjoying their after dinner espresso. I get myself ready to leave while Ro pays for the whole thing by card. Fortunately, I know exactly what their plan is after this, probably because I do the same thing. Once they leave and get into a taxi, I jump into another one and follow them. They end up making their way back to the woman's apartment. So after I confirm that they've gone inside, I return to the hotel. I don't know much about Taiwanese dogs, but some breed I'd never seen before came out to greet them before they had arrived at her place. Interesting. Could it be possible that she's also a divine selection participant? <laughs> She waves her hand in dismissal. Guess she wasn't able to learn anything interesting, so now she's pissed off. Meanwhile, I'm feeling pretty great because I've gotten my hands on some crucial info. Well, 
もったいぶらずにとっとと言いやがれバカチン。Yep, she's this, alright. I heave a quick sigh before explaining what I saw. ロノヤロ。マジメナカオシテオンナトゴリューシテアガタ。オンナカゾクジャナイナ。ツマモサンニンノコドモモ。まだ北京に住んでいるはずだ。Either he's a really sleazy bastard, or the woman she met was also a participant in divine selection. ああ、若い女だったぜ。ありゃ愛人だな。ご丁寧にマンションに入るときキスをしてやがった。OK, he's a sleazy bastard. 悪趣味なやつだな。だろ、あの太っちょ、真面目そうな顔した愛人作ってやがったんだ。犬にも懐かれてるみたいだから。相当通い詰めてるぜ犬にもねおっと悪趣味なのはお前だぜ中年男の恋事情を覗き見してんだからさ I'll take that as a compliment あんたイラついてるからそりゃねえぜともかくだこいつの未練は愛人で決まりだな Our last two attempts were regarding his family and work but neither caused the card to appear It might have been because we weren't entirely certain, but part of me felt that we weren't on the right track. I'm confident about this one though, which is why I direct my comment to the book, expecting it to churn out a card for me. Oi, Donanda! I j i n d e m a t i g a i n i h a t a r o All that follows is a brief period of absolute silence. Sounds the sound of the air conditioning humming away in the background. Zanne. Yomi ga amakatta m i t a i d a n a Are da ke jishin man man de han no shina in da kara. 情報自体が間違ってるってことだろうな。I have no comeback. All I can do is begrudgingly jam a cigarette in my mouth. すぐなら喫煙所へ行ってくれ。私はタバコの煙が嫌いなんだ。I don't think we should anger o d e t It looks like she could kill us with her thighs. Or maybe on second thought, let's go anger o d e t やり直しかよ。おい、また明日あいつを追うんだな。She flashes mere standard grin in response. お前にはまた尾行をしてもらおうかな。私は今度こそ尻尾をつかんでやるさ。好きにしてくれ。ち今頃の愛人とよろしくだよ。I find myself eyeing Odette after that, but now、nah, I wouldn't go at it with someone like her even if she asked. Oh, I would 150%. I head out to have a smoke after that, a little annoyed at myself for even considering that option. We leave Taiwan in the morning and check back in the same hotel as before when we get back to Beijing. I part ways with Odette, who says she has something she wants to look into, and then I start tailing Ro again. Getting anything worthwhile regarding his regrets as he goes about his daily business proves to be a lot more difficult than expected, so I make my way back to the hotel after I confirm that he's returned home. さあ,ね、あとは日曜を迎えるだけだし宴会しに行こう初日に行った店がいいなあそこの北京ダックはうまかったアゲンはあどの未練が分かったってのかああだがお前にはまだ教えない指名が2人になったら優先権とやらの取り合いになるからな But how? That goddess did mention something to that effect now that I think about it Like, if two or more people elect the same person, they gotta reveal one piece of their own info to everyone else to gain election priority. Sure, you'll be able to get info from the person you eliminate, but you're putting way too much at risk in exchange. Odette's removing the chances of that happening to us by not telling me. In other words, she doesn't trust me. Can't say I trust her either, though. Wait, what? Ah. Her sudden insult takes me aback, but she isn't actually addressing me. She's looking over to the door I'd entered from. I approach the door, praying that the worst case scenario in my head won't take place, and then I open it. The fat bastard followed us back here. Ro Chan Ho, the very man we've been following around, is standing right there. That means he's the one who's been tailing me all along. ね
君のようなチンピラがそうとは思えなかったチンピラだと He continues talking, blatantly ignoring me. オデット・マランソン私をこそこそ調べていた首謀者は君だねほう首謀者と来たかやっぱり私の方が偉そうに見えるってことだなそんなことはどうでもいい He's right. The important bit is that he called her by name. Meaning he's in possession of her name card. He's made that clear in an attempt to bait a response from her. Chances are she realizes as well, which is why she responded the way she did. Yume no sekai. Nakanaka shinjirare nai hanashi dewa atta ga. Yume no naka de de atta jimbuts ga onaji hikoki no naka ni tara. Shinjinai wake ni wa ikan. Yep, he definitely saw o d e t in business class. Kimi no yo ni me datz jose wa. ね、He's not wrong. Yeah, she really does stand out. Not only is she pretty damn tall, but she's also built like a tank. You could say she's got looks, but those don't stand out near as much. ね、Is your family really what you care about now when you have your own mistress? She takes a deep breath before shaking her head. ああだから私の取引はこうだミス・オデット君は私を指名しないと約束してくれさもなければこのチンピラに君の情報を教える Oh, things are getting spicy! His expression is deathly serious I have to stop myself from cracking a smile The room is silent as can be but for no reason he's hoping At long last, Odette shatters the illusion when she bursts out in laughter. She follows that up by punching him square in the face, which sends him flying to the opposite side of the hall. The dude must weigh over 200 pounds, a true testament to her ridiculous strength. She saunters over to him, takes a seat, and laughs right in his face. He's holding his cheek after that punch, but it looks like to me his nose took more damage, considering it's gushing blood. Mmm, <laughs> that is a very nice shot of her. What? <laughs> そうしたら私はお前の家族を全員こいつに殺させる。Oh, that's playing dirty. はあ ?She punches the floor as her way of telling me to keep my mouth shut. お前の目論みが成功して仲間割れしたとして、万が一に私が負けて、こいつが生き残ったらどうだ家族だけじゃなく、お前の未練も死んじまう。She's insane, terrifying, and absolutely banging. A perfect villain. <laughs> she stands up and kicks him straight in the gut. Gotta say, even I think she's overdoing it a bit. She grabs him by the collar while she spits out her insults. All he can do in response is close his eyes and turn his head away.
Well, that was exciting. Once she finishes, she motions for me to go back into the room with her. There is plenty I want to call her out on, but the last thing I want to do is go against her will right now. It's like I've said before. She's the type of person who tries to ultimately solve everything through violence. Once we're back in the room, she acts like nothing just happened. Sir, I could go for some grub right now. This woman really is nuts. The Mafia might do some shady stuff now and then, but we still have some attachment to society's norms, considering we dip our hands in regular business to a certain extent. Meanwhile, people like her who live by the rules of the sea lack any such attachments. That realization helps me to explain why even a mafioso like myself can be surprised by someone's insanity. Ro has outright vanished by the time we leave the hotel to get some food. I actually feel pretty bad when I think about how he's probably spending what little time he has left with his family. That being said, the fact that I'm enjoying some food and booze despite it all proves how messed up I am too. Once we've satisfied our stomachs, Odette hits me with a threatening gaze. Oh no, we're clearly not gonna do that. Will you crush us with your thighs? I can't say that's much of a punishment. She says this like it's a perfectly acceptable topic to bring up during a meal. <laughs> she lets out a raucous laugh, but I can tell it's phony. Oh, that's the kind of person who walks a thin line at all times while making sure that everyone else thinks otherwise. Not that I'm the one to talk when I do the same myself. She said she wants to avoid us both electing Ro, but another reason she's refusing to tell me his regret is because she knows there's a chance he has info on her. The fact that I've only realized such a simple truth now proves that I'm still in no position to get an advantage over her. Jumping ship to Ro's side would do more worse than good for me too. So basically I'm best off remaining her ally. <laughs> You'd have to be a real dumbass to earn the wrath of someone this insane. Having finished our business, all that's left to do is wait for the second round to start. It seems like we're back to Rinka! There's been no progress at all these past few days in regards to Divine Selection. As for things with Naomi, as for things with Miharu... There's nothing really changed between me and Miharu ever since the whole thing started. There's actually been a significant change. I'm referring to the fact that we're both just acting as though nothing's changed. As for Naomi, I've been seeing her more and more recently. That's mainly due to me teaching her how to brew coffee for the culture festival. She's spilled boiling water and folded the filter wrong a good number of times, but fortunately none of her cups have been broken, yet. That's likely due to the fact that she's aware how much my grand treasures them, so she takes extra care despite her inherent clumsiness. Time for the second round of Divine Selection! I say this out loud for no reason. From what I remember, I was taken to the dream world at midnight last time. Might as well go to sleep now if that'll happen again. I glance over to the clock, which says 11 p.m., and then I shut my eyes. And we're back! Parka, my lovely lolly goddess! Where are you? I find myself in the court of fate once again. It's as impressive as ever, and as I figured it doesn't matter whether or not I'm asleep when the time comes. To my left is Miharu, and to my right is the Middle Eastern man. I take brief glances at both their faces, opting to not engage with either of them. Part of me is afraid of that man, he doesn't seem to be phased by the fact that he's eliminated someone last time. I can't imagine I'd remain that stoic, knowing I'd just stolen someone's future from them. None of the other participants speak with each other. Instead, we allow an oppressive silence to rule the court. 
きげんよう運命の奴隷の皆様 Hello there my lovely lolly goddess The one to break that silence is none other than the girl we've all grown familiar with She stands in the middle of the court her posture as elegant as ever I'm fairly sure she wasn't there when I arrived and yet she's here now I assume this is what it'd feel like if you saw someone teleport in front of you She actually might be teleporting though assuming the whole thing about being a goddess is true 皆様まだまだお元気そうでございますわね再び死ぬ実感などまだ湧いてはいないのでしょう Okay, she seems to be a sadist Just hearing her speak helps convince me that she's not lying about being a goddess You can tell she's looking down on us based on her ruthlessness which somehow seems fitting for a goddess I've definitely reevaluated my thoughts on her over the past week Hello there, Parker. You seem absolutely evil right now. So, let's go. She softly announces the beginning of the end. In response to her command, the hands on the clock begin to move. The long minute hand points at me. I didn't notice during the first round thanks to my circumstances, but this is basically the method of confirming whether or not the participant wants to elect someone. Yep, we don't have any information yet, so we'll just pass this week. Miharu opts out not to elect anyone as well. The man appointed as numero three does the same. He's tall and wears a suit. I assume he's European based on his facial features. That reminds me, how is it determined what we'll be wearing here? I sincerely doubt he'd be sleeping in a suit, so did he get brought here while awake? Not like what you're wearing at the time reflects what you'll be wearing here either. The fact that I'm wearing my school uniform despite going to bed in my pajamas proves that. As for Miharu, she's also in her uniform. This outfit doesn't stand out too much, so I doubt anyone could identify it without taking a picture first, but that doesn't change the fact that info on me is out in the open. I can't do anything about it as long as I don't understand how to influence my appearance, though. Putting that aside, I take a look at all the participants again. Out of everyone, Numero 7 is the only one who's visibly distressed. Maybe Park was just acting cynical before. There's no doubt that he'll be elected tonight. I'm sure that's what everyone else is thinking, too. There's likely nothing in common between all of us other than the juncture of causality thing Park mentioned before. Our ages, gender, and nationality are all over the place. <gasps> it's the bomber kid! Numeros 4 and 10 are younger than me, even. Both are girls and foreigners, from what I can tell. That's the bomber girl that killed us! How could you not remember her? Why did kids as young as them have to die? The fact that I can only come to know the reason through eliminating them is nauseating. Before I know it, the clock hands make their way around to numero 11. It's a tall woman built almost like a sports athlete. Not only are her legs nice and long, but her chest is sizable as well. You can tell there's no way in the world that she's Japanese based on her looks. I'm normally jealous of tall people because of my height, but even I know it's impossible for me to ever look like that. Aw, Rinka. Don't worry, Rinka. Miharu likes us for who we are. A clock hand stops in front of her. Huh. I feel like our eyes meet all of a sudden, probably because I've been staring at her for so long. <laughs> I avert my eyes immediately. I don't know why, but my instincts are telling me to fear her. Yep, you should definitely fear her. She's not normal. Not just because of her build. There's something fundamentally different between her and regular people like me. It's a different kind of fear than one I feel in relation to numeral 12 too. Part of me gets worried that I'm about to be elected, but as I expect, she goes straight for numero 7. The small hour hand spins to point towards him. The platform both of them are standing on begins to emit an odd light. After that, the minute hand shifts to numero 12, who simply shakes his head. Looks like he's not electing anyone tonight. Parker smiles once the longer hand finishes making its way around. That's not the face one should normally make when they know someone is about to get eliminated. Both of their platforms start to move and gradually rise above us. The same thing happened last time, too. I take my eyes off the rising platforms after muttering that. It doesn't take long for them to finish. Also, as I expect, it's the woman who returns. She reports the results to Parka, her expression one of obvious displeasure. <laughs> Numero 
Numero 5 looks like the oldest of all of us, he's most likely Japanese. He doesn't react when she mentions that she's learned his name, although he might just be feigning indifference. In fact, the woman seems to be more transparent with her emotions than him. She's the complete opposite of Numero 12 when he elected and eliminated someone. While he displayed no emotion at all, she's openly annoyed, but deep down she seems to be enjoying this. She reminds me of a kid who gets angry when they lose a game, but secretly enjoy the experience. It seems like Odette eliminated Ro Chan Ho and also learned the name of that old guy. I want some more time to observe things here, but Parker brings an end to tonight's round without a moment's hesitation. Unlike the first round, I've come away from this having learned a lot more. Unfortunately, that only serves to give me an even worse feeling about the days to come. And we finished our second week.